yesterday we weren't the worst in the world, but we definitely weren't as consistent as we need to be if we want to be genuine title contenders. We can just improve our consistency a teeny weeny wee bit. We may well consider ourselves automatic promotion contenders and certainly playoff contenders. We have Northampton, Port Vale, Morecambe, Oldham and Walsall today, starting with a game against Northampton, who are at present one of the best sides in the division. They were leading the way not too long ago. Uh, they've fallen off to about fourth now, so hopefully that's a sign that they're in a bit of a wobble right now. But you can see our goal scoring record is better than anybody else's. But there's one glaring standout there as well in that our defensive record is also woeful. In fact, our defensive record is the fourth worst in the entire division. So despite all of our continual improvements of the squad, still defensively we're not there yet. Jenkins is only 58 rated and not only that, but Pumphrey will now be missing for this next game against Northampton and the next at least one after that as well. Clark will be drafted back in. Gardner is onto the bench as well as Gardner who's there too. And uh, hopefully that level rated centre-back partnership won't cost us too much come the end of the game. I certainly hope not. We'll start with Northampton away. We've got a difficult episode today with a number of uh, tough fixtures, but perform well, results will come, points will come, promotion will happen. I am certain that we will get promotion this year, although whether it be a first, second, third place automatic promotion finish or a fourth, fifth, sixth or seventh playoff finish and then subsequent victory through that method, I couldn't tell you. Let me know in the comment section now, at this stage, where do you think we'll finish this season? Judging on all of the results that we've had so far this year. I'm going to say third. I'm going to say we will get automatic promotion, but we won't win the title. We'll wait and see. Drop the video a like, of course, as ever, if you're enjoying this save. It'd be great if you could do that for me. It really does help the channel grow and help the series go from strength to strength. And thank you to those of you that continue to do that. And those of you that continue to come back day after day after day as well. Thank you, Ashrin, for upping your pledge on the Patreon from one tier to the next. That's very much appreciated as well. Your continued support on that platform continues to help us make sure that we can pump out the content here on YouTube and Twitch on a daily basis. Right, Barrow against Northampton. Let's get it done. Boy into Allo. Nice to have him back in the starting lineup regularly as well. He not on international duty at this particular moment in time. Pope, I'll just try and dart inside. That's a very good turn. Ah, but the defenders closed me down again. Mills has the pace to deal with it. We do have development plans on absolutely everybody right now. So trying to get growth everywhere in the team continually. Most importantly, in some of those wide areas, I need that extra little bit of pace. Now, Salim looking for Tudor. Could try and go for goal here if I find a bit of space. Space out of premium, though, evidently, on the edge of this Northampton box. Out to Prince. Salim is in the middle, but I don't know whether I'll find him. Oh, Prince hasn't got the pace either to get away from Salvi, but can win the corner at least. And from the set piece, Jenkins is up, as is the ball. All the way over there. That's not going to be 1-0, is it? Allo chases down Watson and wins it back. Pope will find Mulholland. And forward. That's a lovely ball to Tudor, who's onside here. I'll try and get it on his left, which we've done well, but the shot in the end isn't good enough. Tudor has 10 goals in 11 leads. Oh, he just kind of caught his standing foot as he was swinging through there. Not the best of technique. He has 10 goals in 11 League 2 games so far this season, which is outrageous. You want to know what is also outrageous? Salem has 8 goals in 11 games and 8 assists. In 11 games as well. He has 16 goal contributions in 11 games. Which is nutty. Bear in mind we've only scored 24 this season. So Salem has been directly involved in two thirds of our entire goal scored this year. He's got a goal or an assist in 16 of our 24 goal, uh, goals this year in League 2. That's mental. He's so important to everything that we do, Salem. Thankfully for me, Smith misses the target the other end. It was almost their striker 
Mr. S that gave them the lead rather than at the other end, our Mr. S doing so. Mr. S and Mr. T currently leading the line and leading the way in the goal scoring charts as well, though. Salem second only to Mr. Tudor. Pope turns well, finds Salem on the edge of the box here. Allo, oh, it's a gorgeous flick. That was made by the flick from Rupalo. Wonderful assist. Pope, really good on that right-hand side. That dart in working this time. And Ball, that's not the first time he struck a ball across goal with that left foot, is it? But I need to see that. I need to see that assist again. Oh, it's just so good. So nonchalant, just the little flick around the corner. And then Ball, first time, you know he's not going to miss that. 1-0 Barrow in the promotion hunt. Mills round the left for Northampton. We're very nearly at half time here. I'd love to keep the clean sheet. We haven't kept a clean sheet in Christ knows how long in a play game. A couple in Sims, but in these play games, I do have a tendency to concede quite a few goals, and that's half the reason why our defensive record is as bad as it is. Because I'm as bad as I am. Corner comes in from Marshall. It's a good delivery. It's a good header by Smith, and he's almost got too good a connection on it. Down into the ground, bouncing up then and over the bar. Not far away at all for Northampton and an equalising goal. But at six fields here, it is over the top of the bar and away for a goal kick. We will hopefully now hold our 1-0 lead until the break. You never know if I can find the right ball and the right finish. We could have found a 2-0 lead before the break. Oh no, and Tudor was offside. So close for Salem. Watson through to Smith. And Marshall's in behind on the right. Trying not to overrun it with Prince, but I kind of did. And Smith will find a teammate. And Watson, at two attempts, can't find the equaliser. The first one was well saved. The second one is from a tight angle. He's unlucky not to have been able to squeeze it home. But Northampton firing a, wa a, a warning. Yep, that's how you pronounce it, isn't it? Northampton firing a warning shot, letting us know that we cannot be safe in the knowledge that this game is done and dusted yet. I really should have tucked that away for two. And the game might well have been done and dusted. They've had a really good opportunity. I've had a really good opportunity. We'll stay at 1-0. Ashley Seal is apparently quite fast because he's just raced away from Jenkins there as if I wasn't even there. Back to Harriman from right back. Try and take control of the man in the middle here. Rup Allo. Ashley Seal again. Oh, it's a lovely turn. Oh, the finish. He just knew as soon as it left his foot, you could tell from the angle that it wasn't going to find that bottom corner. Wasn't quite well aimed towards, quite well enough aimed towards that bottom left-hand side and sweeps past the post out to Corboa. And the runner there is getting forward well, Harriman, but Corboa used again. This clean sheet under pressure now from Northampton again. Watson had their best chance so far. Robert's trying to create a better one. Dice out wide. Ten to go here at Sixfields. And there's really not long left for Northampton to get the point that they're looking for. Or even, perhaps, if they score early enough, quickly enough, three. It'd be remarkable if we can seal a clean sheet. Certainly not something that I expect, really, ever from a side that I'm playing with. I'm going to make some changes. Though. Chisholm can come on for Tudor up top as well. And I'm going to bring... I'm going to bring press on for Prince. Not as fast, not really as good anywhere really, Prince, uh, sorry, Press, but the fresh legs, as the, a lot of the players come down that right-hand side of their attack, could make the difference. Away, please. Oh, caught on his heels there, the defender, but Rose not able to turn it home. Rather oddly, it's the game where we've had to field our weakest defensive line of the season, where we may end up getting our best defensive result of the season don't know as we've kept a clean sheet at all this year have we i'd have to check the fixture list oh, but it looks like we're going to keep a clean sheet now montero da costa will just slow things down i'm not going to rush not going to waste time sorry i am going to waste time i'm not going to rush and have time catch me out by losing possession with a few seconds to go and getting caught on the counter-attack chisholm through there and again on to Salem. Ball's calling for it, so we'll play the pass and I'll drill it into the middle and someone surely can turn this home. 
And Salem does. Not first time like I wanted, but he is still able to squeeze it across the line before the keeper gets there. Northampton players on the floor. Flattened. They've given their absolute all in this one, but it hasn't been enough. Salem, unlucky not to get another just before half time with one crashing off the bar. But at the end of the next half, he has managed to get it. And over the line went the ball. And we do get a clean sheet. Salem with one, Bull with the other, 2-0 the score. A remarkably rare sight for a Chesnoy gaming side, especially in the lower divisions. A clean sheet. Have we done that before in a played game? We didn't do it at all yesterday. No, not at all. Have we done it? Uh, nope, not there. Uh, no, we've, that's the first clean sheet we've kept all season. And we are... Coming up towards halfway through October. So hopefully that's a sign of our defensive improvements. Although it was without our best defensive player. Which is slightly frustrating. Right, are you any better in centre mid? Overall, no. But, but hopefully with some more training. Obviously at the minute he's in poor form. So it's going to affect the rate of his improvement. Let's try and train you as... What a box the box really? Get that shooting, passing and dribbling up. Do I concentrate on the centre mid just to get the passing dribbling and physicals? That's probably more important. His pace is probably good enough. Right, let's train him there. 19 weeks currently, but that's only because he's in, quote-unquote, poor form. Now, we're a Port Vale in the league. It's going to be important that we play the right games and sim the right games today. Port Vale are 10th. Okay, Morecambe are in 13th. We've got them later on today. Oldham are 21st, so that stands out as an obvious one to sim. And then Walsall are the other side. Walsall, and where they are depends on what happens with the other Sims game. Rochdale going to the top of the table now. That win moves us up into fifth. Walsall 17th. So Walsall and Oldham seem like the two that we should sim, really, don't they? And they were the last two of the month. So Port Vale played next. What's the... I tell you what, we're not looking that bad. We're not looking that bad, stamina-wise. In fact, everybody is fully recovered. Pumphrey hasn't recovered from his international duty, though, but that just means Clark gets to retain... His spot in the starting lineup, which, to be fair, after keeping our first clean sheet of the season, he certainly deserves. So against Port Vale, we go again. Another clean sheet would be lovely. It means I guarantee at least a point, but only wins will really do now. We want to win as many as possible and get ourselves up into League One for next year. That's a lovely ball in behind to McCurdy. There could be him with a chance here. I see the man at the back post. That's what I'm worried about right now. I don't know where Prince has gone. Thankfully, Jenkins deals with it because if they found a cross there. He had all the time in the world to make that 1-0 to Port Vale. Prince did get in the way that time, but still couldn't get rid of the ball. Campbell will do so, and Pope will break. Now, there is the opportunity, if I can get the right distance on the ball, to play Salim in on the counter. It would have been a hell of a ball had it came off. But we still... Could get ourselves a goal in the not-too-distant future. Tudor having to race away from the attentions of Taylor, who lunged into that. And it was a hell of a lunge as well from behind. Tried to turn away from the challenge. He's got to be getting at least a yellow for this, and he does. That's too far out to shoot, isn't it? Yeah, definitely a long way out. Too far to shoot. Let's try and aim that about there. See what we can do. Salim spins the defender nicely. Left-footed shot. Bounces off Smith and out for a corner instead. See if we could do it from this sort of set piece instead. Decent delivery. Prince is up. It's fallen to Jenkins! Of all people! Young Jenkins, the centre-back, gives us the lead at Barrow Boy Lane. Sometimes, someone random will pop up with the most important goal. Sometimes it's Vincent Company against Leicester from 30 yards. Sometimes it's Jenkins from five. Gavin with his first goal of the season and for the club. That could be a massive three points if we hold on to this 1-0 lead. Whitehead. Oh, nice little stop and go. Finds Mark Cullen. Try and get Allo involved defensively. Conlon out wide to Worrell. That was an early cross, Worrell, but on this occasion taking his time and finding a teammate. There you go. There's the early cross. Cleared away nicely by Campbell, but only as far as Conlon, though. And Whitehead will try and recycle possession. Still not over here. Still not done in this first half. 
Certainly not expecting back-to-back -back clean sheets, but I'd be <laughs> delighted if we can get it. But at the same time, pretty stunned, to be honest. And if so, I don't think Pumphrey will find his way back into the starting lineup until we end up conceding a goal in a game. Ah, oh, that might happen now. It has done. Well, Pumphrey can start in the next one then. Balls. 1-1. One, one. Lovely ball lofted up wide to Worrell. Brings it down well. Cross to... Oh, that's a dangerous cross to... Oh, McCurdy is going to get there. A goal either side of half time. And Port Vale lead now. Bing, bing, bong. Unbelievable header. Unbelievable header. Loft it towards the back post. He's just got the positioning on the defender. <sighs> Keeps. Probably should do better. But it's a very good header. Ha! <sighs> right, that's not part of the script. Port Vale have completely turned it around on its head. And from hoping for back-to-back -back clean sheets, I just don't want to lose now. Through there looking for Salim. Pope's available on the right. Salem just trying to shake off the attentions of their midfield as everybody drops back for Port Vale, trying to hold on to this 2-1 lead that they've gotten themselves. Tudor, he's offside there. Salem, I'm sure of it. He's buried it in the bottom corner, but we won't get our equaliser. Not another goal contribution for Samar Salem. I just couldn't quite get the pass away quickly enough, and it was quite simply given as offside. No VAR needed there. A long way off. Weissmeyer is on for Whitehead for them. They've given it straight back to Salim here and might have gifted him the opportunity to still get that second goal. They may well have done, but Visser makes a good save. Well up, Jenkins. Lovely header. Allo forward to Samir Salem. Oh, you can see the defender with poor positioning there and Pope with a simple finish. What are you doing? Tudor! Come on, pal. Allo, please bury this. What is... What is he doing? What is he doing? Why is he... Oh, if... How is he... The decision-making. I don't understand it. Just score. Open goal. And he's... Oh, I can't even... I'm so annoyed. I can't even describe it to you. What on earth is... If we don't win the... I can't finish a single sentence. If we don't finish... This game, with anything other than at least a point, I'm going to drop Tudor and Chisholm can get a start in the next game. That is not good enough from Damian there. I can't believe it. We actually might end with the defeat. Tudor's mistake becomes even more costly as Port Vale score a third. And number eight, holding off the attentions of the defender. Somehow able to outmuscle him. And unfortunately, Mark Cullen has made it 3-1. And Tudor will not be winning any fans over. If it stays as is, I can't quite believe it, to be honest. Ball into Tudor. Oh, and then he's given it straight to Conlon and can't find a teammate. I have a funny feeling. We're going to lose this now. Unbelievable. Only 15 to go. 3-1 Port Vale. Just not good enough. By Smyer. Into the middle. Away by Prince. Win that please Campbell. He's done excellently to do so. Well, Holland will turn and find Salem. And on the overlap now is Pope. Salem is arriving. I'll poke that there to look for him. He'll get there first but not take the ball with him. Moron. Chisholm. Forward looking for Salem. It's an excellent ball. Salem does have the goal. I'm pleased. But at the same time, gutted. And of course, it's Chisholm that gets that assist with an exceptional through ball. He's going to get the start in the next game. It's a wonderful ball by Chisholm. Take nothing away from the finish, though. That's outrageous from Salem. Another goal for him in the 90th minute today. But it's only to half the deficit from two goals to one we will not unless I can very very quickly win the ball back and go up the other end be getting anything from this game Prince keep that in play that's game a 3-2 defeat against Port Vale Damian I uh, I have no words for you 
quite simply couldn't form a single sentence when it happened, and I still don't think I could form a single sentence now. Damien Tudor, you are dropped. Chisholm off the bench to get the assist for Salem for the second. Right, Morecambe away. Back to winning ways, please. Songoto tackled by Allo. Chance early on here. Allo's not the fastest, but he's drifted away well. Looking for Chisholm. He wants his first team spot back. Very fast start we've made to this game, Derek Ray. Chisholm with the assist off the bench for Tudor in the last game. Oh, I moved Tudor out wide, but still in Tudor's position in the 11. And then on the score sheet within six minutes when he fully replaces the Croat. Well, Chisholm's back in business. We might be back in business too. Mendes Gomez played in down the line for Morecambe. And it might not last long, this 1-0 lead, if he continues. Dance past two, and then rather than take on the challenge, elected to pass the ball, they still could score, though. Stockton tries a shot that was never really going to work from there like that. That was very lucky, though. And Wilded won't have a better opportunity. Their number 10 scores after our number 10. But mm, that was a bit fortunate, really. It just skewed off Stockton's foot and ended up somehow at Wilding's feet. That's annoying. Another game without a clean sheet. Although, Kakana sells pretty unlucky that we haven't kept it in this game so far. Let's just try and keep the goals conceded tally to a minimum then from now on. Rather than trying to continually go for clean seats, which evidently isn't working. Let's just try and only concede one, perhaps, rather than three. Wildy, their goal scorer with a double chest control. Out to Mendes Gomez. I thought that was going to go to Stockton. It still could. Wildig in the box. Solid tackle by Jenkins. He's running a risk of giving away a penalty by trying to tackle in there like that. But we've done it well enough. Right, Mulholland on the counter. Into Chisholm. Wait and time the pass. And there's Ball. Chisholm's gone again. Try and turn inside and actually find Allo here. That rocket of a left foot. Blocked by Knight Percival. That's a terrible header by Lucas Ball. He must be better in that area. His left foot is a wand. Well, oh, the keeper's, <laughs> keeper's left foot wasn't so good there, was it? That one broke. Pope into Salem. Decent first touch. Good acceleration. Into Chisholm. Spin the man. Not quite able to do so. Allo, that left foot. Draws a save out of Leatherin as it doesn't get blocked on this occasion. Ball's left foot whips the ball in. Meller will head it back to him. No offside because it came from a Morecambe man. Chisholm. Prince quickly across. Allo. Oh, I'm not going to find the space to shoot, am I? You're going to go for that overlapping run? No, evidently not. Pope. Chisholm. Salem. Ah, oh, and I can't squeeze it to Pope. We'll stay at 1-1, but I'm trying so hard to get myself back in front here. We need to get more wins than we're getting if we want to automatically promote ourselves. I really don't want the lottery of playoffs. Desperate to avoid that this year. Lucas Chisholm's making moves, but I'm going to ignore him for now and hope that he could maybe be on the end of a move rather than in the middle of it. Well, he's in the middle of it now, and it's a lovely ball through. To Bull, who stands it into the middle. It's cleared away. I'm going to try and knock this back to Prince if I can. It's a, well, well-won header, but not well-aimed header. And actually, because Prince was forward trying to get involved in that attack, now I'm under attack going the other way because he's out of position. Stockton has the runner. O'Sullivan, man outside, man inside. Pumphrey in the way. Gets his starting spot back and getting involved defensively as well. No offside there for Price. Despite the call from one of the defenders, O'Sullivan turns well. Can't afford to lose this. Really can't afford to lose this. O'Sullivan. I really need to win this. Let alone, I can't even really afford to draw it. Wildig in the box. I dangled a leg. Oh, we've got a tackle in. Is the keeper going to get there? He went for it, but missed it, thankfully. Ball and man. Otherwise, that could have quite easily have been goal or penalty. Deary me. 25 to go. Chisholm's on the run. We'll send him. Come on, lad. Find me the right pass. Allo. No, off the bar, please. Pope with the follow-up. Chested down by the defender. Allo again. 
I can't get a winner here against Morecambe, despite everything that I try. It will not come for me. Nice block by Campbell, and we'll go for a counter. Come on, son. From right back, Campbell's on the run. Pope is here with me. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to pass to him. Mal Holland is there in the middle, sailing through that gap. Hello. Oh, yes, we will find him. No, we won't. It'll be Bull. Eventually, Lucas Ball. Good save down low by Leatheran. I was sure that was going to end up in the back of the net. Both men outmuscled each other when chasing after it as well. And I just can't get there. This winning goal will not come for us. Gardner's completed his change to centre mid as we saw. But certainly McMullen is the better option. And do I do I start a war up top between Chisholm and Tudor? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'll give Chisholm the chance to be the winner for us. Or get the winner for us. There is definitely an internal squad fight going on for that second striker spot now though Pumphrey just slamming the man to the floor there 12 minutes to go 1-1 one, one. local derby everything on the line we've had red cards in this fixture before we've had missed penalties in this fixture before desperate to get the win on this occasion Sullivan over the top Jenkins wins that Mulholland can't get to it Wildig does and he's got the option there to play the man through. And into the middle. Oh, Pumphrey with a very important header. Challenging from behind the striker to get the ball away. Stopped and going off for them now. Mendes Gomez into the middle. Slew on. Jordan Slew is very quick. That's a woeful corner. The keeper will catch it. And I know I am going to bowl it out quickly. I thought about maybe taking my time. Trying to wait a second for men to get forward in support. But I haven't got the time. I haven't got time. But I haven't got the pass either. Ball lofted forward. Get to that first. Well in Jenkins. Get to that first. Wildig does well. This is getting a little bit stretched now. And a little bit heart in mouth. Pumphrey wins it back. Come on, let's get a late winner. Mulholland forward. Space for Lucas Ball. Please, Lucas, do some magic now. Please find the pass. Please. Chisholm. No, it won't reach him. Leatheran intercepts. And that might be all she wrote. Or is it? Chisholm back. Forward to Salim. Chisholm make the run. Chisholm makes the run. Chisholm scores the goal. We win it with seconds to go. There is a battle between teammates now. A huge battle between teammates. A fight between Chisholm and Tudor. Chisholm wants his first team spot back. Oh, yes. Chisholm, my man. So important for us last season. And now, trying to be that important for us again. What a finish to cut it back across goal in a derby of all games as well. A last-minute winner for the Barrow boys. We will win away from home against Morgan with the last kick of the fucking game. Hit that fucking thumbs up button if you haven't already. That deserves it. Oh, my lord. The last kick of the played game today, or all three played games today... Oh, two teammates fighting it out tooth and nail for that first team spot. One makes a mistake and his teammate compounds that mistake by ensuring that he takes the opportunity presented to him because of the previous man's fuck up. Oh, let's go. Yes, Chisholm. I know there'll be some of you out there that are very pleased to see Chisholm back in the starting lineup and on the score sheet as well. Right, I'm going to go and sort my training out and I'll see you for a couple of sim games. Right, Oldham are 23rd, we are 5th, Tudor I will throw in for this Sims game purely because he's a higher rated player and in Sims that's what makes pay, we hope, we haven't done well in Sims recently, we do do well in Sims this time, Bull, Mulholland and Bull again, 3-0 the scoreline, a big win for us that, yeah, it's the first win from a Sim we've had for a little while you know. In the league, at least, certainly. Up to fourth. Up to fourth. Two points outside the automatic promotion spots and second place as well, which would be ours. Which would be ours on goal difference, too, if we were level on points with them. We have the joint best goal difference in the league. We've been conceding less, but still conceding too many. Up next in the final sim game, after a little bit more training, is Warsaw away. Another clean sheet, actually, to the point as well. Two clean sheets in one episode. Would you believe it? We've dropped to fifth 
thanks to uh, some other games in hand that have been played now. McVeigh, as you can see on the right-hand side, has been voicing his concerns in the media about his lack of first-team football. He's 61 rated, McVeigh. He's not the worst player in the world, but obviously Pope has been continually growing very well. And nobody's going to replace Bull on that left-hand side anytime soon, are they? Again, I'll put Chisholm on the bench and put Tudor back in. But for the time being, in played games, until Chisholm goes on a bit of a dud streak, I think, I think Tudor might find himself on the sidelines. A 2-0 win, Jenkins and Mulholland. Chisholm came on for Salem in that game. Three clean sheets. Three. Although two of them had to come in Sims, but still, Mulholland on the score sheet is a rarity as well. All the rarities in today's episode, but are we having an intra-squad battle here? Is it going to get quite tasty between... Oh yeah, I'm not going to be able to do that, am I? Is it going to get quite tasty between the three strikers? And I'll say three strikers. Right, are we getting... Yeah, we go. There we go. The other squad, monthly squad reports are in as well. Right, let's see what we get here to end the day. Uh, that's not very good. That's not very good. Lucas de Groot, not very good. Your rubbish too. As 27 to 37 current ability. That's what I'm waiting for, Lucas Costa. Welcome to the youth team. £1.5 million valuation. That is why we're doing it the way that we're doing it. Louis Bell looks rubbish. Gabrielle Mason, 16 years of age, 80 to 94 potential. He'll come in as well. We said we were going to make exceptions for some players that were under a million pounds, and that one is rather obvious, isn't it? So Mason is a centre mid, 80 to 94 potential. Decent acceleration, ball control and curve. Crossing is 60. He screams winger to me. Doesn't need to you too. Uh, left footed. I think we might have a new left sided midfielder as a backup to Lucas Ball. Two weeks to train him as a left mid. That's not going to take long at all. Right. That's fantastic. And then Costa, a right mid. Not very quick though. Good short passing. Good free kick accuracy. To be fair, still good crossing as well. At, oh, he looks exceptional. As a centre mid, surely he'd be even better. Development plan. I am going to change him to centre mid, just purely for the lack of pace for the time being. He'd probably be better as a cam, but oh, I don't know because the finishing is low too. Oh, I'm not sure what to do with him. I'm really not sure. I could try and just burn the pace growth. Maybe support midfielder and burn that pace growth. I think for the time being, I'm going to try and train him as a centre mid. I'll wait for your feedback on that one. He is 16. They're both 16, so I could call them both up. I'll hold off on it for now. But certainly with some lower rated players still in the mix, we might find some of these guys on the fringes and on their way out now as some higher rated players are on the way in. Right. We start tomorrow with the first round of the FA Cup and four games in the league, including promotion chasing... Colchester United. <sighs> Fights within the squad. Clean sheets at the back. It's all kicking off today, isn't it? I'll see you tomorrow.